Hi everyone, it's Tara. Welcome back to Tara's Take. So today I thought we would have a play at making some tip-ins, tip-outs, tip-downs, tip-ups. <laughs> um, I am going to be using this page to work on and it is an eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And we're going to pretend this is, I mean, it will eventually make its way into a journal. But I like to work on cardstock when building pages for gluing, okay? So what I mean by that is if I'm going to be gluing anything that's weedy, like, you know, our ephemera and stuff that we make, I like to make sure that my paper can sustain the weight. So I usually try to use cardstock, okay? So I have printed out a few pages. These are from two of my digi kits. They're available in my shop. Uh, this one is, let me look here really super quick so I don't give you the wrong name, just in case you are interested in it. This first one, this one is Vintage Garden Party. And then this one here is Watercolor Garden. Okay? So I thought it'd be kind of fun to use these with some book page, um, maybe even some pages um, that have like, what do you call it? Uh, I'm trying to think of the word like rice paper, tissue paper, that kind of stuff we could do, or you could distress the back because it's white, or you could print a backing on it, however you want to do it. For me, I think I'm going to be cutting these down and I'm going to be creating. Hopefully, I can get, I am hoping I can get three different sizes, okay, from the page from the one page so what I'm doing now is I am going to cut down and you can do various sizes shapes forms I want an overlapping experience in on my page so what I'm doing is creating I'm, just cutting. I'm using very small scissors I was fussy cutting earlier <laughs> And I didn't switch scissors. I'm like, why aren't these cutting right? Okay, here we go. I got my big ones now. So what you're going to need is some paper that you want to utilize. And if you just want to build a page, just one sheet of cardstock. You can use white, cream, black, cardboard, you know, or buff colored, um, the brown, whatever you feel like. But what I'm aiming for, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I think on this one, I'm going to do... A fold okay and usually I would use a hinge sometimes I use a hinge this time I'm just creating a hinge out of what I'm doing with the one page um, and I think I'm gonna do that I try to do that all the way okay so this one is gonna be and you can you can put it in over the edge of your page like this, okay? Or you can do it as a hinge of its own. So this one I'm gonna do in the center and it's gonna be my uh, tip up. And the reason it's a tip up is because when you open it, you open it upwards, okay? Now you can do one on a page. I just was thinking that I kind of wanted to do um, like a multiple look. Uh, I wanted to do more than one on a page. So I was thinking that would be kind of fun. I'm looking here in my book pages real quick. Trying to be quick. So all you're going to need to participate today is your choice of papers. I prefer, like I said, I'm using cardstock. Um, you can use regular copy paper. Nothing saying you can't. I don't trust copy paper as much as I trust cardstock for most of my work. Um, 
And then you'll need some book pages, magazine pages, tissue paper, even napkin. You could collect. Um, you could do a. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I can't think. Um. So I'm gonna glue this so when you tip it up, it's got the words there. Okay. Huh. Or do I wanna? I'm thinking. Sorry. I'm thinking if I want to do book page or if I would rather do blank page. No, I'm going to do book page on this one. So I'm, I'm wanting it to tip up like this. So I want the book page to be, okay. And I think I am just going to... Kind of trim off my bottom here so I don't have all that white and then yeah all right so I'm gonna do this and just trim this along this edge okay I'm using those scissors again you can also, um, you could fold it like I did on the other side and trim it that way. However you want to do it. I'm, I'm giving it a try this way to see how it comes out. It'll probably need trimmed a little bit after I'm done, but that's all right. I'm going to be, I haven't tried this. This has been all in my head, my idea, okay? So I'm a little uneven here, I can see it. So we are doing this for the very first time for me. I have not attempted this. It's not anything new, I'm sure. Positive, it's not. I just like interactive pages and I thought it'd be fun to have a page that was like uh, up, open, open. You know, that they had places to write, multiple places to write. Or like this is going to get decorated, you know, and it's, it'll just, it'll look good to have it. And it's kind of fun to use, I think, in your journals. I, I think it's fun to have, um, just like I said, um, interactive. I always get excited about interactive things in my journals where they're having to open and close and look for things. And it's not just all right there, you know, flat on the page where there's some dimension to, you know, what I'm doing. And I, I just like that. Okay. Now let's see if I can actually get this on here evenly. That will be an, a feat in itself. I really probably should have just glued this down. So that's what happens when you do not plan ahead and you just kind of dive into your project. Okay. Oh, I got it pretty close. It's pretty close, you guys. Not bad, actually. Not not bad at all. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and I'll trim a little bit here. And as I always say, I repeat this a lot, I use the glue stick because it's the book page. The book page is not a thick book page. It's very old and it's very thin. So it takes pretty good to that glue and I don't have to fret about whether it's going to lift or not because yeah okay. just kind of evening things out a little bit here a little bit because it is uneven on that edge. There we are. Okay. So now we have one of our flips and it's got its own little built-in hinge, which of course my paper, I should have scored. I remember what you said, Pam, you mentioned scoring my paper so it doesn't tear. 
and I did not, so I'm going to see if I can pull my scoreboard out here and maybe do that on the next page. I didn't really expect it to tear because it's just printed on my, uh, it's just one of my digis on regular cardstock, but it tore. Anyway, so now I said I wanted to try and get three on, in one, so what we're going to do here. Okay. Okay, now. Let's see. We're gonna make I think we're gonna make this one our flip up. Okay. I am uneven, I can see it. There we go. <clears throat> Alright. So I'm gonna try this scoring trick and see if it works for me. Okay. Should work just fine, I'm sure. If I can just get it straight, because you know, my cutting, you can tell the cutting's not straight because this is not sitting up against their blush, so. But I did do it by, you know, visual, so it's not like it's gonna be straight. I think I just poked all the way through there. All right, well, I still tore it <laughs> just because it's me. <laughs> but the trick did work. Okay, so now, I think on this part, because this one, I want it to be flipping in. So here's what's going to happen. So far, we have this one. Okay. And then we have this one on the top. So we'll have a flip in. We have that one. Okay. And then we're going to have... And you could actually, if you cut this right, you could have it in fourths and have four of them. I'm probably going to have this one. Let's see which direction. Yeah. I'm probably going to have this one flipping over from this side. Okay. So when they open it, it'll go like this. And either this one or this one. Maybe it'll be this way. Yeah. So it'll flip down. Okay, and then flip up. And then on this part, I'm probably going to do some distressing, a little stamping, and have it so that they have a place to write. Okay, and then I may leave this blank for writing as well. Um, I think I'll definitely use this one, leave this one blank. But this one, I think I'll put, I'll put uh, some book page on just because... Um, Okay, so it's going to be coming down. Let's see. I'll use a different book. <clears throat> How about this one? Look at that yellow. It's so cool. Nice. And... This is out of a book about medieval times. And now this one I'm going to have going this way. So when it pulls down, they'll see it upright, okay? But I'm probably, like I said before, I'm probably going to decorate on top of these with something that will look cute. So it's not, it's not really going to be like they can read what it says per se. Okay, it's just going to be... Oh, I really cut that uneven. I just saw that. Back to glue. You want to make sure and get your edges. That's with the glue stick, that's probably your most important part is making sure you get the edges down really well. And I'm going to trim this after I lay it out instead of doing it before like I did last time. Too, too bad. Like I said, I think that's more my cutting of my paper than it is the way I laid the 
the down way I laid down the book or on the book page. I have a doctor's appointment today, so after the video, I'm going to be getting ready for that. And now I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm thinking that I might distress with color instead of, I think I'm going to use my thistle instead of using um, that because look in here to see if I have another here we go if this will stick do I have my I bet I don't I was gonna see if I have my glue of course not <laughs> I wanted to stick this to the bottom of <clears throat> of this wine cork, wine bottle cork, but I do not have my hot glue ready. Well, these, if you peel this black off, they have sticky on them. So that's what I will use. All right. I think this color will look really pretty. I love this color. It's archival ink and it's thistle. I even um, made a journal and called it, uh, I can't remember now, thistle something, thistle dreams. And it was made in the theme color was this color. It was very beautiful. In fact, my sweet friend Valerie purchased that journal form from me, and um, so I know who it went to, which is a blessing. It was one of my first journals, too, and I just fell in love with this color. <laughs> You can probably see why it is a very nice color. All right, so there's that one, and then where's my other one here? <clears throat> I woke up at like 1230 you guys oh my gosh I couldn't sleep and I went to bed I mean I tried to get to bed early it was 630 so I mean I got six hours but I'm still I'm just tired today sometimes six hours seems like enough and then other times it just doesn't seem like enough for me I don't know why side and we'll be ready to lay these out. I think I like doing the built-in uh, hinge instead of, you know, the extra, but I do like to do the extra hinge only because when I do it, I usually use different colored, uh, I'm thinking I want to round these. I don't know. I'm going to do it. Um, but I was thinking I like to do the, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. 
I started thinking about doing the rounded corners and I lost what I was saying. I, I really did. I lost my train of thought. That's funny. Uh, it'll come back to me as I'm doing it. You know, we're probably like, you were saying this. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, hinges. See, I knew it'd come back. Thanks for sending me the thought. Um, no, seriously, I, I like to do the hinges in different papers. I enjoy that. I think it's fun. It kind of gives it that almost that little collage look, and it's just a little different, you know. Okay, so now I'm going to do this one. And I am really cut it, really cut it bad on this side. And I don't want to take off a ton because this is already kind of a skinny piece here. Jeez. Bad cutting, bad cutting today. Mm -hmm. That was very crooked. Look at that. Now, let me get my scoreboard again. Where did I put the tool? I just had it. Where is it? Uh, well, I guess I'll just... I don't know where I did, what I did with it. It was right here with the board. Girl? <laughs> there it is. I knew it was here. I knew it. Which one of you hit it? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be doing this side because I want this coming in from the outside. If I ever wanted it to come in from the inside, I'd do it on the left. So, let's see just how crooked I really am. I told you, I am really crooked here. Let's see. Yeah, we need to... Uh, yeah, we could use fixing that slightly. Let's see. If I can just... Oop. I'm not even scoring straight here. Ugh, I'm terrible at it. Did I literally just come over? Okay. All right. Good enough. And I'm doing it lightly so that I don't tear it again. All right. Now, this part I think instead of, yay, it worked, Pammy, look, <laughs> no rips. What I'm going to do with this side is I'm going to grab one of my little brushes here and I am going to thistle the back side of this because I want to stamp it, but I don't want it stark white and gonna kind of cloud swirl it around you know I always these always remind me of cloudy swirls um, when we do it like this so then I'm gonna stamp on it and probably make some lines down the center so they'll have a place to write just thought that would be fun All right, I got some little stamps I got on Amazon. Let me use the thistle with these, and they are so cute. They're just little edge. Oh no, my thumb's dying. Let me plug me in here, guys. Sorry, almost lost me. Yay! <laughs> we caught it. Anyway, I had got these, and I got them yesterday. They were like four ninety nine, and um, yeah, I like these so. I thought that these might be kind of cute as little to do little corners on here. Let's use one and see what we get. Okay. And 
I'm just gonna, should I use black or should I use the thistle? Because uh, you know me, I do like things to match. And this black is very dark. I don't want it to take away from take away from these pretty little uh, pages and the color scheme. I don't know. I just don't want to darken it up too much. I'm going to flip it and do it this way because then that way I can see what I'm doing. Okay. There we go. That one's better. This one's a little bit light on the rose, as you can see. I wonder, you know me. i got to try and see if I can go down on it again and get it right here. Oh, that is really good, actually. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see here. Let me see here. Do I want any others? Actually, this one might look kind of cute in the other corners. Just for fun. Okay. Should I do it like that or like this? Let's do it like this. And then what I think I'm going to do for the lines is, um, I think what I want to do for the lines is use corrugated cardboard and just make, <clears throat> make some lines. I enjoy doing it that way. I think it looks pretty cool. And hopefully, I think we're gonna we're gonna press this first and see how it does. On something else here, real quick, just. To That'll be good enough. This is just paper I get at the dollar store. It's like um, the mini poster board. I've told you guys about it before. I get it at Dollar Tree in case anybody's wondering where it comes from. And uh, it works really good as just a desk topper for when I'm working on a video. And yeah, and then it can be thrown away after it's been used up pretty good. I'm just going to press, you know what, in fact, I think I'm going to press it this way. Okay. Yeah, so now they have lines to write on. Okay, and now we are going to glue. It is time. Oh wait, you know what? We do need to we do need to uh, add our distress here to the edges really quick. So I hope you guys decide to give these a try. It's kind of a cool little way to to do uh, something fun to your to your whole page. I did that with the angels the other day too. The whole page layout, and I just kind of liked the idea of. Usually, I'm working on piece I'm piecemealing stuff. You know, um, I don't know. This time, I thought it'd be fun to just do. To see what it would be like to do entire an entire page layout, um, 
this week. I don't know. I just had a few ideas for different ones and thought, well, give it a try. So we have our three pieces now. And like I said, you could do a fourth piece if you wanted. You could do a tip in. I, I call this tip in. And usually when I've done tip ins, I do them as a singular page inside of like a, a Bible journal or something. Um, like my journaling Bible, I will glue the edge of the page and it it will stick really well down in the crevice of that. And if you're super careful, it, it can be done. So I call that a tip in. I call this a tip up. I call this a tip down and this a tip out. So what I want to do is just kind of get an idea of what looks best here. Um, I kind of want them to, yeah, overlap like that. Okay, and then, or maybe I should do, should I do this one over here? Yeah, maybe I should because of the outer one. I don't want it to get tangled in with the others. And then that way, yeah. I don't think it really matters which I mean because it's going to close either way however I want it to um, so now we're just going to put our glue and you just need to decide you know where oopsie, where you'd like it to um, I need a dry wipe you just need to decide where you want it to sit on your page Okay, so this is going to be the top, so I have decided I want mine to be, kind of be to the left with this top one. Okay. Okay. Make sure it's straight. There we go. All right, so now we have that. And... Now we can glue in the bottom one. And like I said, I don't think it really matters because whatever direction you do it, I mean, once you get these in there, you can close them however you want. They can lap because they're not going to, they're not glued in in such a way that they're going to hinder each other at all. So once they're done, you can kind of gauge, you know, where you want them or how you want them to open and close. Or look, you know what I mean? And you could do them all the same size, and uh, or you could do them like I did and do them in different sizes. But I think it's a good way to use an entire sheet of paper. I only wasted just a little bit, you know. So now we have that one in. And there's that one, see? And now, I'm glad this is actually kind of working. This is how I saw it in my mind's eye. So, I'm happy about that. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Shoot. I forgot to round my corners. You know everything has to match, right? <laughs> Not everything, but sometimes. Okay, back to this. Get this glue on here before the other glue dries. Now, make sure I'm upright, butterflies pointing in the right direction. So are the flowers, We're good to go. And I'm gonna put this one toward more toward the center of the page, at the edge. Make sure I'm even here, because this is an even page edge, so I know that I didn't cut it or anything, so I didn't mess it up. Okay, go in there and rub off that glue. All right, so now you have this inside area, which I'm gonna do something with. Probably should have done it beforehand. I'm not gonna worry about it that I didn't. But now you have your tip, your tip in, or your tip up, your tip down and your tip out. 
and there's our page. So now we can decorate all of these. Okay, and I'm gonna decorate the inside. And that is gonna be super cute, I think. I really like how that turned out. I hope you do too. So let's see about decorating this little puppy. Um, what time is it? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do, this is what I was talking about. I should have done, but it's okay. Distressing my edges. Doesn't need a ton of work. And this edge doesn't really need done because I kind of glued that down pretty, pretty close to the edge. So I don't think, I mean, maybe I could do the edge of the paper itself, but other than that, yeah, just barely right here. Okay. Don't you pull up for me. Need a little more glue right there. That's the good thing about art glitter glue. You can kind of just put it somewhere and pinch and it, it'll it seal it down, you know, if you've missed a spot or whatever. I don't know how I did this with my thistle, but I got it on this piece right here. And it's permanent ink, so yeah, it's archival, so it's not gonna come up. All right, so there we go. Now I've edged that and this inner part, I do think I want to do some of the um, lines. How wide is that? I want it to kind of the reason I'm holding it in here is just kind of gauge I'm eyeballing where I need to put ink so and then to do it I'm just gonna stand up and press on it You just want that impression of lines so they have a place to write. See, not as dark as I'd like, but dark enough. So they can tell. Oh, I can journal right here, you know. Okay, and then let's do, um, where is my, I had them, I just had them. I just <laughs> here they are. Okay, so I'm gonna do a few more stamps. Probably just go ahead. Should I use that one? Uh, I'm thinking I'll use a different one for the inside, but actually, I think I'll just use this rose. And I'm just gonna go because of the way it is. I'm just gonna do some roses in the corners. Just kind of bring a cohesiveness a little bit. I know I did these, but they're just pretty. I like these rose, this rose too. Okay. And I have an idea of what I want to use. I got a kit yesterday that um, I fell in love with it, couldn't resist it, so I'm just going to do those three, um, and just could not resist this kit I found, so I'm going to stick these up my arm drawer, yeah, um, and it's these beautiful, beautiful fussy cuts. I got them at the same time I got those angels that I showed you guys. And yeah, I sat this morning and yesterday and cut them out. But there's just some really beautiful images. Look at that. And these kind of go really good with my kit, I believe. So um, with my backgrounds. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it and do something with those. Okay. So I am thinking 
that on the front of this, I would like to put her. Isn't she beautiful? And I don't really want to do uh, distressing with brown this time because I've kind of been doing this little thistle theme. <laughs> I haven't used my color of thistle in a long time and oh, it really turns my eyes on. It does. I got to admit it. It's got that depth, the burgundy look to it. Um, it goes with the greens, the pinks. It, it just flows and looks just ugh, beautiful. At least to my eyes. I love it. So I think I want her to go there. I'm just, I'm just going to go for it and put her down. Oh, you know what? Wait. I do want to try it. I want to look here real quick. Before I go crazy, because you know how I am, I can be a little bit spontaneous, and then I go, oh, man, I should have waited. And I was thinking that other things I could do here. I could do some sorry silk on the corner. Um, and then I also was thinking, do I want some gold? You know me and my gold. Uh maybe some of this gold ribbon along the edge before I put her down. And then some sorry silk in the corner. Let's go for it. Let's just go for it. <laughs> it's the weird thing about this ribbon. It kind of curls in on itself but it's a straight ribbon it's not uh it's not crimp uh what do you call it um crimped at all but it's still and i'm just drawing a really straight as straight as i can line down this middle that edge right there so that i can just lay this down My husband's working a really long day today. He messaged me when he got to work and saw his schedule. He's like, I'll probably be late today. You'll, you're more than likely going to get back from the doctor before I get, get home. So we're having leftovers. Uh, we are having spaghetti. Okay, technically it's fettuccine kind of made like spaghetti. Courtney likes thicker noodles. So instead of using spaghetti noodles, I end up using like, look at my fingers. I end up using um, the thicker noodle. So yeah, he's he likes those. And then yesterday I told him that because he said something about spaghetti. I go, well, technically it's fettuccine. And he's like, oh, why? And I go, because you like fettuccine. Oh, I like that too, actually. Maybe I should put her on the front here and make this my front. That looks nice. And then like that and like that. From large to small. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I love the purple with the green. Ugh. And then she has the purple inside the flowers as well. So we're gonna do some more gold right here. But anyway, yeah, so we're having leftovers. What are you guys having for dinner? Anything interesting? I know that this is last week for me. You guys are watching this like a whole more than a week ago. I did I did spaghetti for dinner. So, but I'm just curious. What all do you guys serve for dinner? What are some of your favorite leftovers? That's a good question. I do a lot uh, for leftovers. I mean, to make leftovers, because we, we do like to have them. Uh, roast, um, spaghetti. If I make lasagna or enchiladas or chili, that kind of stuff, I always make enough to have some for the next night. We like it when I have some for the next night because I cook pretty much, well, I cook six days a week. So if I can have some leftovers, it means I don't have to cook every night, which, praise God, my husband is kind enough that he actually cares about that. I know that 
It's possible not all men do, but mine does, and I'm so, I'm so grateful. I think I'm going to put the gold on this one, too, just because but on this side instead. Um, but yeah, he always, he always is concerned if I have to cook every day of the week. So we do tend to go out on, we go out on Sundays after church, um, or try to always if we can. And then the rest of the week, usually on Saturdays, I do something easy unless I'm in the mood and then I'll make something a little more extravagant. But for the most part, it's usually, you know, sandwiches or a quick lunch, you know, or if we have leftovers from Friday night's dinner, we'll, we'll use those. Um, yeah. But tonight it is our little spaghetti and garlic bread. Yum, yum. I like that. Okay, so now we have some gold on here. A little something, something. There we go. Okay, and then now, like I said, I'm going to put this young lady here. And I think I am now that my, um, I'm looking here. Do I want to use this color or do I have, ouch, do you hear my knee pop? Dang, that was loud. Kind of gross. Sorry, guys. I have this brighter one. Let's see if it goes. Oh, that would be pretty. <sighs> Again, I say thank you, Miss Valerie, for my sorry silk. <laughs> She shared sorry soap with me. Such a kind woman. I love you guys. All of you. But some of you have been just amazingly generous with me. And uh, I always, always like to remember to say thank you. I always try to remember who gave me what. Um, now, see, this goes well with probably this, but it doesn't go as well with the thistle. So I'm thinking that maybe I will do the darker, the darker one, but I have a better piece of it, I think. Let's see. Yeah, that piece was tiny. I want to use a little bit. Look at, I've got string all over me. <sighs> anyway. Okay, there we go. So I had mentioned doing a video with Valerie and having her as a guest on the channel. And she said that would be fun. So we are probably pretty soon going to do a video at, I'm going to do it at her house. I don't know exactly how we'll do it. If we'll have the camera, if it's possible, I think I'm going to have, try to have the camera set up between us so that you can see both of us working, but I don't know how that'll work. I'm going to see. I was thinking of just doing this in the corner. Yeah. Just kind of here. gotten a little bit better with this now that I figured out that if I bring it toward me it doesn't fight me so much I don't know if everybody has I know Tina does it away from her I mean she like she does it the other way and it works fine for her but for me I struggle with it going that way so This is just going to kind of go around this corner a little bit, not all the way. Yeah. One more little scrunch. little lady ready to go where you belong so what was I going to tell you oh Joey I was going to mention about my son um, he told me yesterday he messaged me and his friend okay when we were when we used to live in the house the kids were born and raised in it was in 
what's called Maryville, which here in Phoenix, that's the ghetto. Okay, now it wasn't always. At one time, it was one of the nicest, newest suburbs in Phoenix back in like the 1950s. Okay, it was built by a man named John F. Long, who built most of the homes in the valley back then. And he built it in honor of his wife, Mary, and called it Maryville. Um, but as the years went by, as happens with old neighborhoods, it became what is known as the ghetto. <laughs> okay. So anyway, we moved away from there when Joey was shot uh, in 2005. But uh, we lived there. My husband grew up there when it was a nice neighborhood and, and then became what it became. But... Um, that's what happens in big old cities, you know, you have areas that just go downhill as years go by, and if the city it doesn't show it any love, you know, any tender love and care, you know, you're going to get, it's just, you know what I mean, poverty brings about crime and, and tends to, and, and crime, you know, we got, you know, you get invited, drugs get invited into the neighborhood and that kind of stuff, and so anyway, my point was that the kids grew up over there. And so Joey had a friend who was this awesome. I used to call him uh, Denzel Washington Jr. He was a very tall, handsome, young black man. And he grew up, I mean, Joey's known him since they were like little kids, okay? <laughs> so his name's Tony. And uh, he, and, he and Joey have stayed friends through everything. Um, and through all that Joey's gone through, Tony's been there for him. And Tony joined the Navy when he got out of high school and he's, he's a career Navy man. He, I don't know if he's retired now. My goodness. He's been in the, the Navy for over 20 years, but, um, or maybe not 20, but coming up on it. And so anyway, he, he is so proud of Joey and what he's done with his book. Um, that he's always invested in Joey and just been, he, Joey calls him his brother and he is truly the definition of a brother. And he actually is purchasing Joey a laptop so that he can write his book and not struggle with writing it because he really believes in Joey and he's like, bro, I know you're going to do this. I know you're going to finish. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, and so he is buying Joey a laptop. Isn't that amazing? I mean, just an amazing blessing. And I told him, please give Tony my love. He was so precious when he was a kid. He used to crack us up. <laughs> he would come to our door, and he would say, because our last name was Mendoza. My my former name was Mendoza, my kids' names. My, my late husband was Hispanic. And so he would come to the front door, and we had a security door like a security screen door where you couldn't see in to the house. You could just, you know, we could see him, but he couldn't see us. And so he would come and stand in front of the door and he wouldn't knock. He'd just stand there and wait. And then he'd say, hello, hello, Mendoza family. Is there any Mendoza's home? This is your neighborhood. How would he say it? He said, "There is a there is a black man at your door. <laughs> I'm here to see your son. <laughs> is Joseph Mendoza home?" And he'd just stand there and talk to like, and we might not even be in the room. I mean, he he couldn't see us, but he'd never knock. And eventually, one of us would hear him standing at the door talking. <laughs> But sometimes we just sit there in the living room and listen to him and bust up laughing at some of the silliness that would come out of that child's mouth. He was the funnest kid. I mean, I just love him so much. And he was so funny. But he'd be like, Mendoza's. Is there a Mendoza there? Are there any Mendoza's home? <laughs> Where are the Mendoza's? <laughs> So yeah, but anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. He's blessing Joey and he's going to, because I was actually going to give him um, my desktop. It's all I had to, to give him, you know, um, and and now I don't, I don't need to. He's going to have his own computer, praise the Lord. So yeah, it's very, very exciting, very exciting. 
I'm very happy for him and he's just he's just working and working and I guess over there at the rehab facility that he's at um, he has 38 people who want to read his book so far and so they have started printing out the chapters as he's typing them they're printing them out and they uh, he's beginning to pass them out like he did at the prison and let people read the story so yeah he's already he's getting a fan base <laughs> and that includes like the counselors you know the the doctor the nurse they want to hear you know they want to read it too because they're just amazed that a young man off the streets of phoenix coming from drug addiction and the life that he had there you know um writing a book by hand and it it will be published you guys and and I just got to say you know it's a true it's a true to life it's fiction but it's going to be very true to life as far as um like the world and what's going on out there um he didn't write it's not a christian book per se it's not an inspirational book it's a true to life uh, a, a, a fiction novel about the things you know that he experienced throughout his life and, and stories built off of the truth you know what I'm saying it's like a, based on the truth um, it's not his life story or anything like that but it's real so you know it's it, people are, are pretty amazed at the fact that this young man wrote it by hand sitting in jail for two years, uh, wrote it by hand, rewrote it, uh, has edited it, I think about five or six times now. Um, now he's doing, as he's typing, he's editing again. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. I'm amazed that my son did that. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm absolutely amazed that he did that. So I am putting here inspire grace. And then up here, I'm going to put journal. I wasn't sure to want to put it this way. I mean, I know that's the correct way, but you know, I do love things sideways. Maybe I'll put the journal part right here because that's a journal space. This is not inspire grace. I like that. I was glad I had these because all the others have like the, the neutrally beigey color. And this is more of, you know, white with the the burgundy it's more bright and I didn't really want to use this wouldn't match you know what I'm saying it doesn't really look good so I'm glad I had these inspire grace okay so this is a really fun way uh, I think it's a pretty fun way to do a whole page layout and very interactive and give them something and you could even put pockets on this uh, of course I could glue down uh, very easily glue down some pockets on these and make it even more interactive you know I can put a pocket in here and have a tag or a journal card there and then again I could put a pocket on this part um, and here too you know so it, it's super I'm liking this idea a lot. I'm glad I did this. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm just going to have time for this front. I don't really have time for the rest of it to decorate, but you guys get the gist, right? I hope you like it, and I hope you give it a try and create something of your own. You can put these any which way. Uh, I could still close this, you know, if I wanted like that. Um, now that I've done the sorry so probably not, but... You know what I'm saying. I could put this any way I want. And yeah, very cool. I hope you like it. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. And God bless you. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you enjoyed your time with me, please feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel and hang out with us some more. We have our Facebook group, Creatives Inspired Corner. Um, you can go over there and join up. We've also got the link in the About section of the channel here on YouTube and also in on the front page. So you can find it really easily. I love you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.
God bless. Bye.